Hey everyone, this is Seagull and Speed 252. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode. I greatly appreciate you pushing that play button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do, because this is a great community. I like how everybody communicate with each other and I love all the comments. I enjoy reading them. My motto is you leave it, I read it, so I greatly appreciate it. Today's topic, as you all can see, I think I may have a major issue with my transmission. I don't know. That's why I'm bringing this to your attention. For anyone who, you know, owns a C7 for anyone who owns previous Corvettes in the past. And if you ever own a car that may have even had the same issue. So let's hop into it. First of all, I had a neighbor of mine who uh, owned a 2015 C7 Corvette, right? And I finally met him like a couple days ago. And I asked him, you know, have you had any problems with your Corvette at all? Something I, I like to ask him those questions because I like to know that that there has been a recent issue with it that I might want to get mine checked out. Or it could be something I'm dealing with. Or it could be something that's minor or not minor at all. And so with this one, it could be a big major issue based off what he told me. And I want to bring this to your attention to see if you experienced this as well. And so I was like, hey, you had any issues with your car? He said, you know, I had a problem with my transmission at one point. And he said, you know, I can see myself, you know, when I'm at a stoplight, my car actually jerks. Or when I'm actually in the gas, it jerks. And I was like, my car kind of does that, but what kind of jerking do yours do? He said it consistently kept jerking on a regular basis. He said he didn't really pay attention to it because he thought it was just part of what the car does. And he said even when he put it in drive, the car would like jerk super hard. So I was like, ah, that doesn't sound like that should be happening because I don't really get mine. Mine doesn't really jerk unless like, you know, you automatically start it, you put it in drive, you know, let it idle down and then it jerks into gear. That's, you know, I think that might be normal. Anyways, he said he drove around like for a year and it kept causing him some issues. Well, this is 2017. He said those issues kept occurring. So he took it to the dealership. He brought it to their attention. I guess I don't know exactly what he did. He couldn't. He told me what he did, but I can't remember exactly what he did. They did some other things to see what was going on with it. They gave it back to him. He said the problem went away for a couple of months, and then it eventually came back. Now, I don't know if this was due to his driving or this was actually due to the car. But anyways, um, he said the issue came back, so he took it back to the dealership. The dealership, you know, made a big ordeal about it, and so they actually took it to the corporate. The corporate said, hey, just go ahead and replace the transmission. It's still in the warranty. Blah, blah, blah. So uh, they took it. They brought, he took his car back in. They dropped the transmission. They replaced with another transmission. He actually said it did the same thing and it had more problems along the way. And for me, I don't know, this is just me, but I feel like once you take an original part off the car and put another car part back on, it doesn't really feel the same. It doesn't drive the same. I don't know. That's just me. That's what the, the issues I've had with cars in the past um, from previous mechanics. Um, you know, it just it doesn't drive the same at that point. And so for him, he said the issue kept occurring. It kept occurring, but his wife drove the car most of the time. And so she always kept complaining about like, babe, hey, this is still happening. It's still jerking. It is still giving us problems. So Dallas just went to the dealership like a couple days ago and bought up. They replaced it with a 2017 white Stingray. So, I mean, it stayed in the, the live Stingray, the Stingray, but it went to a newer model. And sometimes the newer models aren't that much improved. But I reached out to my friend Mike about the transmission issue that I have with my car. Now, once again, I don't know if this is a major issue. I don't want people to get all up and I was like, hey, that's not really a major issue. That's normally what it does, or that's not what it's supposed to do. That's why I'm making this video. Um, when I when I go to the track, when I drive for a couple of hours, I can't even put my arm my, in my armrest. Like, I can't lay it anywhere in this area because it is it's extremely hot. Like, I mean, like, really hot. Now, not hot enough to where I can cook some eggs, scramble some eggs, some cheese, uh, you know, some grits and some, some sausages and all that good stuff because I am kind of hungry right now. Um, but it's not hot enough to where I can cook those things. But it gets really hot to where I don't want to lay my arm on it at all. And so uh, I thought it was just something that just normally happens, right? So I had one of my buddies in the car one day. I went for a joy ride, not thinking about it. He had his, his cameras in here, he had his mounts, his mounts in here and everything else in here, and he had it in back. And when he went back to go to grab it, it was extremely hot as well. Now, it wasn't a hot day, so don't get it twisted with one of those. It wasn't a hot day. It was a nice little normal day, about 73 degrees out. And um, and he grabbed everything from back there, and it was extremely hot. And actually, we went um, out joy around at night at one point, and that same issue happened. So I, I don't know if this is a major issue. I don't know if there's something I should bring to GM's attention. Um, I don't know if I should take my car into the Chevrolet dealership, but it definitely gets extremely hot. Now, one of my friends, good buddy's name, Mr. Mike, um, who lives out in Texas, he used to own a C606. And he brought it to my attention. I didn't pay much at all because I didn't really, you know, I didn't, I don't have a C6, so I can't really say the same thing. Um, he had a C6 and he said his inner console got hot and that was one thing he didn't like about it. And I mean, granted he loved the car overall, but he said his inner console got extremely hot as well. And so now he actually got rid of that car and have a C7 Z06. 
and I haven't talked too much about that to see if that same situation happened. If you are watching it, Mr. Mike, um, let me know what you think about your C7. Do you think your inner console still get hot? Is this just still my car that's doing this? Or this is a Corvette thing or any car type of thing? I don't know if it's because I'm closer to the car I can feel it get hot. Because, you know, in your normal everyday car, like a Honda or a van or something, like you're not this close to the, uh, the inner console to feel how hot it gets. Um, excuse my uh, my loudness, you know, that's the course that's also but that sounded really good, you know. Oh, yeah, it sounds lovely. Um, but anyways, I don't know if any of y'all have the same problem with your C7 or C6 or any Corvette or any car that you own. So if you do have those problems, if you do think it's an issue, you think it's something I need to tech in and get it looked at, please let me know. But that's why I want to make this video. It's not going to be that long. It's a short video. Um, I want to get this out there and out there to everyone because I want to know if there's something I need to really take care of or just not even worry about. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. I would love to have you part of the community. I would love to have you part of the channel. I really do. I really greatly, I greatly appreciate each and every comment. The bad ones and the good ones, which, you know, the bad ones, it is what it is. If you want to take the time to comment, I appreciate it. It's okay with me. I don't really get too mad about anything, honestly. Um, it's funny how my friends, I mean, you're such a nice guy. I have no reason to get mad about comments that people leave because at the end of the day, I do this for fun. I don't get paid for YouTube. I mean, and I do this for each and every one of you. I do this for myself because I enjoy communicating with each and every one of you. Like, it's, it's unbelievable, the audience that we have. Now, once again, I don't have a big channel. I said it a lot. And, um, you know, I just I greatly appreciate it. I love all the emails you all send me. I love communicating with each and every one of you. And, and remember, like, if you want to ever see your car and feature them in any of my future videos, uh, feel free to send them to me at speed 252 at gmail.com. Once again, at speed 252 at gmail.com. Email me as many photos of your car as you like, and I will definitely try to get them in the videos as they progress. Um, I don't care what type of car it is, what year it is. If it's something that you love, let's go ahead and share it with the world. It don't have to be a Chevrolet brand. It could be a Ford brand. It could be a Porsche. It could be a Lamborghini. It could be a Honda Civic. It could be a Honda Accord. It could be a Prius. For all I care. If you're in love with that car, that's your baby. Send it to me. It'll be in the video. Simple as that. Um, now, once again, thank you for watching. Thank you for pushing that play button. I do have merch available. Um, I do have people that do currently buy that. At some point, I will get a website up, so it'll be easy to just go to that website and buy stuff. Um, somebody asked me recently what kind of you know equipment that I use on my YouTube channel. You know, I use simple stuff like GoPros and stuff, but everything I use currently is down in the description below. Um, if you're interested in that stuff, that also has up my channel. So down below is a description of um, the things I use for my YouTube channel. If you click on those links, it directly straight take you straight to Amazon. And if you use that link, that will also um, you know, help my channel as well to go directly to my channel, and um, it will help benefit me um, in general. But yes, you know, once again, I look forward to talking to each and every one of you. I appreciate you for tuning in. But back to the question at hand, I want to make sure I get this out there before I leave and get out of the car. My inner console gets super warm, and I don't know if there's something that's just for my C7 only, or if other owners you know have this in their C7 or their previous Corvette. So, with that being said. Leave your comments down below if you have the same issue in your car. So I need to know if this is just something normal or if it's something I need to take my car and say, hey, this is what's happening and I want to bring this to your attention. Once again, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. I look forward to reading your comments. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Without further ado, let's check out some of your cool rides.